Registered connectors can be distributed as part of Microsoft Teams app packages, whether as standalone app solutions or as one of the several capabilities that your experience enables in Microsoft Teams. You can provide it to users directly for uploading within Microsoft Teams. There are two different types of connectors, incoming webhooks and Office 365 connectors. And in this section, you're gonna see how to create an Office 365 connector and add it to Microsoft Teams. In a previous section, you learned how to register an incoming webhook for a Microsoft Teams channel so that your web service could submit the message via an HTTP post. The other type of connector that's supported by Teams is an Office 365 connector. These can work with not just Microsoft Teams, but also with Outlook. Incoming webhooks have all the same capabilities and features as Office 365 connectors. However, Office 365 connectors differ from incoming webhooks in a couple different ways. Office 365 connectors can be submitted for validation by Microsoft for inclusion in AppSource. Installing apps from the native Microsoft Teams apps experience can simplify the setup steps required for adding a connector to a channel. If your Office 365 connector isn't intended to be used by anyone who has access to AppSource, you can publish it just to your organization. And when adding an Office 365 connector to a Microsoft Teams app, the developer can specify a configuration page. This page is presented to the user when they add the connector to a channel. From this page, the developer can obtain the endpoint and send it to the web service as part of the connector registration. The endpoint is the same URL that is generated by Microsoft Teams when registering an incoming webhook. This differs from the incoming webhooks where the person registering the webhook must manually add the endpoint to their web service. Now you can distribute your registered connector as part of your Teams app package, whether it's a standalone solution or as one of several capabilities that your experience enables in Teams. You can package and publish your connector as part of app source submission or you can provide it to users directly for uploading within Microsoft Teams. Now you're gonna start by registering your connector using the Connectors Developer Dashboard that you see here on the slide. Your users will complete the entire connector configuration experience without leaving the Microsoft Teams client. The configuration experience, implemented as a web page, is displayed within the Microsoft Teams client within an iframe. The configuration page flow works like this. The user is gonna select your connector to begin the configuration process, and then Microsoft Teams loads your configuration experience in an iframe. The user interacts with your web experience and completes the configuration, and the user selects the save button that triggers a callback in your code. Finally, your code processes the save event by retrieving the channel's webhook settings for the connector and stores the webhook endpoint so it can submit the HTTP POST request to it in the future. Now, developers implementing the configuration experience should make sure they do the following. First, your code will always use the SDK to get the current user, channel, and team context, if necessary, and start the authentication flows. You can initiate the SDK by calling the initialize method. You can also call the set validity state and setting it to true when you want to enable the save button. You should do this as a response to valid user input, such as selection or a field update. You then are gonna register a register on save handler event handler that's gonna be called when the user clicks save. And then you're gonna call the set settings method to save the connector settings. You're gonna save the information that your configuration experience collects from the user. Microsoft Teams keeps a copy of the settings so that the user wants to edit the connector's configuration in the future, it can pre-fill the form. And then you're gonna call the get settings method and that's gonna fetch the webhooks properties. You're gonna call this during the save event and when your page is loaded in, in the case when your user edits an existing configured connector. And then finally, you're gonna register the register on remove handler event handler. This is optional and is only necessary if you support the user uh, to remove the connector from the channel. It's called when the user removes the connector by selecting the remove button on the configuration page. Now let's talk a little bit about editing configured connectors. Your code should handle when users return to the edit in an existing connector configuration. And you can do this by calling the set settings method during the initial configuration. A call to set settings is made as part of your register on save handler implementation. And then the remove handler um, aspect of this, you can optionally execute the event handler when the user removes an existing connector configuration. You register this handler by implementing the register on remove handler method. This method can be used to do cleanup operations such as removing entries 
from a database. Now the last step to make your connector available to Microsoft Teams is to include it in the app's manifest. The manifest file shouldn't have any properties for configurable tabs, static tabs, bots, or compose extensions in the manifest. If those are present in your app manifest, make sure you remove them. Don't just make them empty collections. You're going to define your connector in the app manifest by adding it to the connector's property and include the following properties. The connector ID is the unique ID of your connector that is obtained when you register it in the connector's developer dashboard. The configuration URL is the fully qualified URL where the configuration page is hosted and the scopes that should be set to teams. Make sure to include your two icons using the icons property in the app manifest to be able to specify the icons for your connector.